Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning. Um, Thursday morning, December 15th. I'm glad to be here. This is one child abuse survivor to another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And the chat room is open. I did pop the link in there to what we're looking at this last couple of weeks from spiritwire.com. And that is um, 21 self-esteem tips. I'm kind of going slowly through them, but um, good stuff there. Really good tips. And I'm going to try to incorporate them myself and try to remember to do some of this stuff right. Um, good stuff. I like the website. They have books and a book for sale, I think, there, and uh, different products that you can get, or at least want anyway. But it's a great website. You can sign up for a little newsletter about self-esteem, uh, the self-esteem tips and stuff like that. And it's from spiritwire.com. So that's what we're looking at this week. And so you know, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, I... Yeah, I've been on Blog Talk Radio for two years. I had no no idea how long I'd be doing Blog Talk Radio shows. I thought maybe I'd do it for a few months and see how it went, but two years later, here I am. Really mainly because people are listening. You know, if people weren't listening, it really it would still be, I guess, good for me. But um, it really makes it worthwhile for me to do this these shows, right? Because I appreciate everybody who's tuning in. You know, it's a lot of work keeping up with Blog Talk Radio shows. There's so many shows I want to listen to on here that I just I haven't had time to. I haven't made the time, and um, there's some great stuff on Blog Talk Radio, so I appreciate people tuning in. I really do. That takes, you know, part of your day, right, to tune in to hear what I have to say, so I really appreciate it and spending this time with me, right? So you have to listen at your own discretion, though. I'm talking about abuse, and um, abuse is a sensitive subject, right? You have to know what's good for you to listen to. If you think the topics of abuse might bother you, you need to turn the show off. So listen at your own discretion. And young people under the age of 18, I just ask that you have permission to listen to my shows from an adult, like have an adult listen to the show with you. That way they can help you make a decision, you know, whether or not it's age-appropriate for you, right? Because my shows are not for younger children. I'm talking about abuse, and uh, abuse is a sensitive subject, right? So, you know, yeah, and um, there's a lot of adult content on my shows. So they're not for younger children. So anyone 18 and under, just have an adult listen to the show with you, and then they can sort of help you decide whether or not it's age-appropriate for you, right? So thanks, everybody. We're going to get right into this looking at uh, self-esteem tips. We pretty well made it to number seven. That's from www.spiritwire.com uh, forward slash self esteem tips.html. And I just found this page just looking for self esteem information. You know, I'm always looking for information that will help me out in my journey, in my, my healing journey. And I'm sort of looking at self development all the time. So I just run across these things as I'm searching around, right? And I just thought I'd share this with people because I thought they were pretty good tips, you know. Number seven says, Create an environment for yourself. This can be joyful colors, uplifting music, nature photos, plants, uplifting posters, open windows, you decide. Wear clothes that you feel good in. So create an uplifting environment for ourselves. You know, this is something that we have the, like, it's really our choice to do, you know. Like, um, I think people sometimes forget. I know I do. I don't know about other people, but I, I think for myself, I sometimes I forget to do these things. Um, you know, forget to look at, uh, at things that are beautiful or to take the time to think about, you know, the beauty of nature and really the, the power of nature and also just beautiful, you know, serene photos that you can find out there like on the web and whatnot. And I know I love to be out like in the mountains or out in nature just walking and enjoying nature. And I don't have a car anymore. It's hard for me to get around. Um, I live right in the middle of a big city, so nature walks are kind of, you know, this actually, this city is one place where you can still get a hold of nature right in the city because Calgary has parks built throughout it that are, um, they're not just park, actual um, pathways for uh, wildlife to go through because uh, Calgary, Alberta sits really close to the Rocky Mountains and it's pretty uh, pristine up here still in Alberta, Canada. And so there is, right outside the city, I mean, it's, it's, it is nature <laughs> and um, it's not really overgrown with in the industry and stuff. And so it's kind of a, it's this area is kind of like being out, you know, in nature sort of, even though I'm right in the middle of the city. Um, but it, but it's not the same as going like to the mountains and, and actually, you know, you know, sitting and, and listening to a brook, you know, or a running river going by and watching the, the animals that are around there and, you know, listening to the wind, through, you know, going through the trees and stuff like that. I used to love to do that kind of stuff. And it's, when I had a car, I would actually make it, you know, make it a point to, to go and do things like that. Now that I don't have a car, it's a little bit harder. Uh, but even within my city, there's areas that I can go that sort of 
take you outside the element of being in the city and you can sit there and just, you know, watch the river or whatever. And it's important to do these things. I know I forget because I'm so busy in my life trying to accomplish so many things that a lot of I really do put just forget about it. You know, what I mean it just is it just isn't priority. And I think that balance is the key and for myself I'm really trying to learn the balance. Like I've had people tell me stuff like, Well, it's all in the balance, you know. Um, we got to balance everything out, and whether we're, you know, because so many times like, I don't even have kids, and I have children. I can't imagine like somebody who, who has children and works full time and trying to accomplish things. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have any children, right? So it's just my mission, which is to stop child abuse. My sweetheart, who's terminally ill, which that's a, a big issue. I do spend as much time with him as I can because his days are are numbered. All of our days are numbered, but. <laughs> His days are really numbered. Uh, he's in stage terminal um, liver disease, and so in stage. I mean, what's that? Like he's been in stage for a long time, and as long as his liver has one or two cells that are good, he'll be here. And they said that the minute that those cells go cancerous or or whatever, then he's gone, and it will happen really fast. Like because he's only got a portion of his liver that is actually alive. Really, the rest of it's 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 uh, it's dead. <laughs> So poor guy, but anyway, he's um, he's hanging in there, you know what I mean? And every miracle really that he is here because they gave him two years to live um, eleven years ago. So my life focus really hasn't been on going out to enjoy nature. It's been on okay, how can I keep uh, and help you know keep my sweetheart alive here by doing what I can? Um, how can I help him? You know, so my life it hasn't really been about going out and seeking this other stuff. You know what I mean? But balance because as he lives. You know, 11 years later, he's still here. And, you know, if you, if, if we, like if I decided, okay, I can't do anything but focus on my sweetheart, I would miss out on a whole lot. And he doesn't want that. Like, he doesn't want me doing that. So even though he thinks I do a little bit too much, during, you know, for my course of, of the week, because I'm always studying and I'm always doing stuff, he he's still, he's happy that I'm busy and staying active and, you know, not just sitting around pining and, you know, moaning and, crying the blues because he's dying, right? Because that's a horrible way to spend your day and it would bring him down. So he needs to be able to see normal stuff so that he can just live the rest of his days in a normal environment. So it's all about, you know, balance and I'm trying to get a hold of the balance and I think we can all, like, we can learn, you know what I mean, um, how to do that, right? And that is really, I mean, one of the ways is create an uplifting environment for ourselves. You know, listen to some music that we like and enjoy that's, that's positive and uplifting or you know, look at some nature stuff if you have a computer. Like, there's always awesome photography and stuff like that on the Internet. And even some of the nature shows on TV, you know. Like, I don't. I used to make time to watch that kind of stuff, which is kind of funny. But I used to, I love the graphic stuff, like looking at wilderness and different places around the world, beautiful places. And, you know, I'm a big outdoor fan. I used to, when I lived down in New Mexico, I used to do a lot of hiking around um, in my as, a, as an adult. Um, go hiking and even up here I did a little bit of that in my 30s and even though I can't really walk like my I can't do too much uphill like mountain hiking I can do kind of lower mountain hiking so I'm just walking through the hills and it's just beautiful to get out there and do that kind of stuff and I don't do that anymore of course I always had to stop for my smoke breaks and stuff but the thing is <laughs> I, mean, I still get to enjoy it and it really did mean a lot to me so camping is one of my favorite things to do I love to camp out in the mountains and, um, you know, just camp out and cook campfire, making coffee. and You know, that kind of stuff is fun. And, I, like, like, since I moved to Canada, it's always been about working and trying to keep my sweetheart alive. So I have really kind of let a lot of that stuff go. And relationships, not building any long-term relationships with people. So, therefore, who are you going to go camping with? <laughs> you just have to go by yourself. And up here in bear country, it's not a good idea. And so... You know, it's really, you know, it's sad that we don't make time to create these environments for ourselves that can help lift us up and and provide some of that balance, you know what I mean, for, where it's not just all about work, it's not just all about trying to accomplish these goals, but it's about also just experiencing where we're at right now and enjoying some of the stuff that's around us. And that's something that I'm really trying to work on. I had a better balance when I was younger of doing that. And I think I, re- I think what it is is, you know, you realize that you come to a certain age and you want certain things to happen. And I have these goals, those little goals set before me. And these goals have taken over my thinking. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, no, but I want to accomplish this, so it's, I have to stay on it. But in the meantime, you, you know, years will roll by. 
And it's like, okay, you know, so I've been focused on this goal, nothing's happened, and yet I've missed out on so much. And so I think that, um, and that's just my own doing, you know what I mean, myself not paying attention and not not doing the balance of enjoying some stuff while I'm on this journey to reach my goals. So I think that we can, it's real easy to do that. And I think people, it, it's not, it's something that we have to literally make time for and say, okay, you know, so set it in my calendar or make it, put it in my schedule that it, something else has to go because I need this time to just enjoy, you know, being you know, whatever it is that you enjoy, music or arts or movies or, you know, whatever it is that, you, that that's just going to bring you some enjoyment and, like, to help us through our day, right, and to help us to feel good. And so I like what they had to say there. Number eight, celebrate your successes, even the small ones. Don't wait to get perfect. Any progress at all is worthy of celebration. And when you celebrate, you are telling the universe, I am loving this. Please give me more. Yay. <laughs> I like that. Um, celebrate our successes, absolutely. Um, even the smallest stuff even, I, I do, because the big stuff just doesn't really usually happen for me. And so small stuff is really important to me um, because it just shows that even in the, you know, in the situations where, you know, I, I, I can only do so much, you know, in my day and I can only have to have control over so much, these little successes are worth looking at, you know what I mean? And so if I do good on a test because I'm studying all the time, if I turn in, you know, my test, I do good on it. Well, it's a celebration for me because it's like right on. I managed to get a good grade, studied, um, I did the work, you know. Um, my sweetheart's alive. You know, every, every day when my sweetheart wakes up, I'm like, yay, my sweetheart woke up. He's alive um, because really, you know, he's on his deathbed, right? And uh, he doesn't look like it. Um, but the thing is, is the tests and the the, the 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 CT scans and all that stuff show those doctors that really. Um, they said, you know, don't make any long-term plans. It could be months or it could be, you know, it could be two months, it could be six months, but, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time left. But they said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because you really shouldn't, like technically they said he shouldn't even be alive because he should have died like about five years ago. So he's really the, he's a miracle. He's a walking miracle. They they, they actually have him in the books as the, the longest surviving liver patient who, without, a, without a liver transplant um, since, the whole thing started where they started doing transplants. So he's the longest living, surviving um, person who's survived without a liver transplant. Um, and that's awesome. To me, that's like some, that's a huge thing to celebrate. So, you know, it depends on what we want to look at. Sure, I mean, I don't have, you know, I don't have a, a car. I don't have any money. Like, I'm, I'm in debt, seriously. And um, these are things that if I focused on that all the time, uh, I could say, well, you know, I'm not doing so well. But but I don't look at that, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that I don't look at it. I'm sort of forced to look at it. But the thing is, is I, look, I, 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 I just celebrate these little things that are just little milestones in my life. Like, hey, I'm still alive. I didn't kill myself. <laughs> my sweetheart didn't die. Um, things, you know, it's what, we've got to put priorities in there. Like, what's a priority? You know, is a house really going to make me all that happy? Probably not because I'll have to clean it. And I really don't have time. I'll have to take care of it and maintain it. I don't have time to do that, you know what I mean? Like, I really don't. I have... I don't even have time to keep my apartment, so I can't even imagine trying to keep a house. Houses are not important to me, but in the realm of society and what society would judge is important, most people would say that that's important, and for me, it's really not. And um, you know, so I don't, I don't really care about that. But these other little things, you know, like these little successes. I guess if I paid down some of my debt, you know, I'd be pretty happy, and that would be a huge success for me. And um, just being able to maintain and keep a, a full-time job would be great. I haven't had a permanent job for years um, because I, let, I actually quit and left and I decided to do temporary work because I wasn't happy where I was at and I wanted to see what was out there. And I was also doing a lot of self-development and working through to see what I needed, what I wanted to do, and I knew it was going to be in something completely different than what I was doing. So permanent job would be a success, you know what I mean? Like just these little things that other people sort of take for granted – um, are, are successful things that we can say we can count our little small successes, you know. Um, like somebody like myself, like I need to quit smoking. So if I quit smoking, that'd be a huge success. But even cutting down is a success. Like if I cut down, then I'm like, wow, that's great. You know, celebrate those little things, right? Like we have to we have to um, see something positive and something good, and not just always be looking at the negative. If we, now, we have to see the negative, too, because otherwise we won't grow. Um, there's no way you can really grow if you don't check out what the truth and the reality is. But the thing is, is that it's not good to, to not look at these little other things so we can count as successes and say, yay, I am doing pretty good, you know what I mean? Like, I'm maintaining, 
um, just for me, just just getting up every day is maintaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could easily just fall into to that whole trap of you know despair and say, oh my sweetheart's dying and I was abused. And, you know, my whole body hurts all the time and I'm miserable and I'm a mess and I was raped as a child. And you know, I could I could easily do that and just stay in bed and just lay there with the covers over my head and say, forget it screw this life because you know I, I used to do that um i spent a lot of time doing that before and, and now you know i don't do that because i'm like you know what no it's a celebration because i because first of all i'm still here you know and this is I, the, what changed my thinking on that and i'll tell you that I, I have talked about it before but i always wanted to die and I, I thought it'd be great if i could just die because i was in so much pain physically emotionally psychologically in every other way in my heart you know just from being abused and just watching my family be destroyed it still hurts me um, to know that my family was destroyed, my you know our whole relationship. There was no relationship in my family with, except for what we could have on this level of denial, and so there was no real relationship between anybody, siblings, parents, whatever. And you know, terrible things happened. You know, two of my brothers killed themselves, and one of my brothers was murdered, and that's always bummed me out. You know, and these these types of things. And I always thought, you know, I'd be better off out of this mess. You know what I mean? Like that's why I was. I was planning my suicides and I was planning my suicides, but and even though I pretty well figured I would never follow through with it, it was it was uh, something that I always did. And I thought, hey, if I if you know if it gets bad enough, that's what I can do, right? So I was planning my suicides all the time, and you know then I thought about it and I thought, there's these little kids out here who are being murdered and killed, you know, by because they're being abused, you know, horrifically, and they're just killed, they're just killed outright by their parents with you know one too many blows to the head. That could have been me. And, you know, I used to pray for that. You know, I used to wish that my mom would kill me. Um, I talked about that yesterday. I talk about that a lot, but that's because that's the truth of it. I used to tell her to go ahead and kill me. And, um, you know, it's, it, you know, these little kids out here right now, tonight and today, would love to have the opportunity that I have to go on with my life. They, they won't get that opportunity. And that's what changed my mind and my thinking on that is that, you know, how how could I be that way when I know that there'll be a little girl or a little boy here tonight that'll be killed and murdered at the hands of somebody that should have been looking after them and, and killed them instead, you know, by, by abuse, that would wish that they could buy shoes here today and be able to experience the good stuff and look at the Christmas tree and, 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 and have hope for tomorrow and say, you know, okay, so it was hard, you know, my life really did suck for a long time, but, you know, I, I don't have to stay that way. You know, I can, I can, the, the beauty of, of this whole thing is I get to recreate, I get to recreate myself. And that, that's what I'm learning how to do. And it's a slow process. It just isn't going to happen overnight because, of course, I have everything else I got to do, work and look after my sweetheart and everything else. But in the meantime, I, I'm doing these little tiny steps that most people would probably think is kind of, you know, a half, half-hearted attempt. But I'm still doing what I can, like, you know, pretty well through the day, um, every day. To, to to give myself the opportunity, you know, to have a good life. Right. And because I know that these little kids out here, if I could ask any one of them, which what I believe when I go to heaven, I will be able to ask them, um, you know, would would you have wanted to trade places with me so that you could live and find out what it truly is to have love in your heart, what it is to find peace and what it is to, to be able to help other people, to help myself, you know, to life? I'll, you know, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them would probably say yes. Uh, there's people out here dying from diseases that would just love to be able to have the opportunity to live to my age. People in their 20s who are going to die from cancer. People in their teens who are going to die from cancer. Never be able to experience being a, a, a mid-40s, you know, a, a middle 40-year-old woman who's perfectly, you know, capable, even with my problems, you know, and physical problems and everything else, to do some great stuff in this world. And so, you know, that's why I realized that the opportunities that I have are, are really a blessing. And so I stopped thinking about, you know, the fact that, I, that I'd that i be better off out of here. You know what I mean? And that really changed my attitude um, to think about that because I thought, yeah, there'd be other people, other children who would probably love to be able to say, you know what, I would love to be able to live to be 45, but I'm only seven and I've been killed and murdered by my parents or by somebody. You know, and that that speaks to my heart. They speak to my heart those little kids, right? And I, I don't ever forget those little children who will die tonight, every night, you know, because of abuse and somebody just killing them and or just letting them die because of their injuries. You know, that could have happened to me, you know what I mean? And it really it did, but I just made it. I just, right? And, this, 
you know, so I sit here and I think about that. And I think, okay, don't be, you know, like I talk to myself a lot and I say, don't be ungrateful for the opportunity that's been placed before me, you know, and that is to live. And that's not just to live in pain and misery. That's to go on to find victory and to, you know, to, to, to do the best that I can with what I have and be happy with it, you know, and, and celebrate it, right? Because I'm coming, like a lot of people, from behind the eight ball, you know? And so, you know, we can't judge ourselves by other people. And that was one of these other, one of the actual um, tips here for the self-esteem tips is not to judge ourselves by other people, not to compare ourselves with other people. Because, you know, I mean, somebody else hasn't, I haven't been through what somebody else has been through, right? Somebody else hasn't been through what I've been through. We We can't compare ourselves to other people. And we truly just need to be able to learn to love ourselves and learn to, you know, to, to, find whatever it is in this life that actually said at the end of the road that we could say, you know what, that was so worth it and that was so awesome. You know, life should be kind of like a, one of your favorite amusement parks, you know what I mean, that when you get off the ride, you're like, that was the best. You know, and if we don't create that by, say, by, by, by setting these things up for ourselves, then we're going to go to our deathbed saying that really sucked. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I mean, I watched my mother do that, right? And that's horrible. And my sister, one of my sisters, same thing. She wasn't happy. You know, she was never happy um, with herself or life or anything else. And so, you know, really, truly, is our it's up to us. You know what I mean? To create this for ourselves, so that you know, to to look within and find out what it is that's going to be the thing that says, you know what, this was an awesome ride. You know what I mean? Because there's these little kids out here who, and people who are going to die from cancer at the age of 15 who are never going to be able to experience being a middle-aged person, being able to do what I can do with the skills that I have and the wherewithal, you know, to be able to, to do these really cool things that, that we take for granted, you know. So I try not to do that. I try to remember to uh, make my day as full as I can, with you know, and, and as good as I can, you know, because... It's, tr- it's really a testimony and a tribute to these little children out here who will not have the opportunity to live to be my age, um, you know, to be able to do the things that I'm, and see the world as I do through somebody who's this old, you know, with the, sort of the wisdom that comes with age, right? And so it's, it's, a, it's a gift, right? And so I didn't used to look at life as a gift, and I, I used to look at it as a, this, this horrible thing from hell, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, you know, I mean, I'm in hell, and this is horrible. And, uh, you know, and that's because I was as a child. But I didn't have to stay there. And thank God, you know, for, like at the age of 41, um, May 22nd, 2007, I climbed up out of that pit of hell and never to return. Um, and I, I left that pit. You know, I was like, no, no, I'm not going back to that pit of hell. You know, that I'm, I climbed out, I got out. And that's, you know, I've done that a few times in my lifetime. Climbed out of the pit of hell of addictions and drug addictions, right? Um, at the age of 21, I climbed out of that pit and left that pit, you know, and sadly enough, a lot of my friends stayed in it. And um, so there's many times that have actually, you know, that sort of represents to me making these choices and these decisions um, to change things, you know what I mean? And so, you know, those are successes. They're huge successes to me. Like to somebody else may not mean all that much, but to me it's huge um, because it really is, it, it affected my life in such a huge way. And so we can't judge ourselves with somebody else, right? We need to celebrate our successes no matter what they are, and even the small ones. I think it's very important. Be grateful. It says you have much to be grateful for, and that's kind of where I was just talking about. Before you go to bed each night, write down 10 things you are grateful for that day and why. This is an important step. Gratitude alone can turn things around for you. What are you grateful for right now? That's kind of that's awesome. I haven't done that, like a journal, a gratitude journal, and I should do that um, because it would remind me of what to be thankful for. You know, and because I do, you know, things I'm thankful for every day, which is my sweetheart being alive, uh, because it's awesome that he's still here. And uh, you know, like we started celebrating my birthday yesterday. He went out and bought. You know, this man is sick. I mean, he's very, very sick. And he walks with a walker, and he has. We don't have a car, and he went out in the snow and the ice yesterday to get me a birthday cake for my birthday for tomorrow. Plus, buy me some little birthday gifts. And he he will go and he would do. He's so ill. <laughs> He's so incredibly sick, and yet, you know, he'll go and do these things. Like this man, you know, he's an awesome, awesome guy. And, you know, he, he wanted to start celebrating my birthday early. He's like, let's just start celebrating your birthday, celebrating your birthday tonight, and we'll just drag it on for, you know, for for, for a few nights until your, until your real birthday, which is tomorrow. 
And um, that's the kind of guy he is. Like, he's just, um, you know, he's a good man. And so I can be very grateful that he's in my life, you know, for every day that he's here. And last spring, when I almost lost him, because he almost, he nearly died uh, last April. So he was in the hospital for three weeks. And they were just going to let him die. They said, no, when he goes, he goes. You better start calling funeral homes. Um, You know, I basically, at that point, he became my focus, obviously. And I said, you know, I'm not going to call funeral homes. He's not dead yet. And uh, they were like, well, we just don't want you to be overwhelmed. I said, no, no, we've been dealing with this for 11 years, you know. <laughs> like, he, you know, we, you know, we're prepared. We're ready for this. And uh, But I said, I don't think he's going to die, and I think you need to do something for him because he just need, he's just it's something to do with his medication. So they flushed him um, for this to get rid of the toxins that were in his brain and going throughout his body. He was just literally dying from the toxic, toxic shock and toxic buildup. He was going into a coma. And he woke up, and he was like, wow. Where, what, what happened there? He was in the hospital for three weeks. So, you know, when he came home, it was such a thing to celebrate. Um, you know, it's like, wow, my sweetheart is still here. You know, and of course we have our ups and downs. It's like every relationship. No, nothing's perfect. But but we love each other. Genuinely love each other and care about each other. And we bring each other a little bit of happiness every day in this world that isn't so happy. And uh, that's important, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's good to have someone in your life. I mean, I wish everybody did have someone in their life that was really good like that, you know. So these are things we can be thankful for. I didn't have a very good childhood. I mean, you know, nobody in my life really looking after me. But but for the last 16 years, I've had this guy in my life who's really made up for a lot of it, you know, if not most of it, you know what I mean? Because he's he celebrates my life, you know. He, he, he wants to start celebrating my birthday three days early where my mother was trying to kill me <laughs> and said that I never should have been born and... She should have just killed me, and I, and I think he knows, you know, my life, and he knows he he, he understands what I've been through. He, he makes an extra effort, you know, to realize, like, hey, that's important to me, um, to help bolster me up. And so he's a huge gift in my life. So there's all these things that I guess, you know, I really do need to keep a gratitude journal, and I really should do that. That's something that's awesome because there's every – I can still walk. That's a miracle, you know. A few years ago they were talking that, you know, there was going to be some serious problems with uh, – well, when I, actually, when I was 18, they said I would probably not be walking much past the age of 40. And, you know, I'm heading to 50. I'm halfway through 40. And I'm still walking. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a miracle, and it's awesome. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of stuff. You know, they actually, people, they said I probably wouldn't live to be past 30. <clears throat> you know? And here I sit. You know what I mean? Um, so there's things that we can be really grateful for. And, you know, just just whatever it is in our lives that that we made it, you know, that um that that this, that whatever it is, whether the sun is shining or there's you know, something something great came in the mail or whatever. You know, someone called and said hi. This type of thing, right? Our friends, we can be very grateful for our friends in our life that are awesome. Uh number ten, create a list of accomplishments and review it often. We tend to get overwhelmed looking at what's left to be done and forget to give ourselves credit for how far we've already come. That's something that I do all the time. Uh, that's that's why I'm always in check with where I'm at and what I've been doing and what I've got left to do. Um, but this is part of my day to do that. Um, so that I don't even need to do because I just do it already. Uh, creating, creating lists of um, of what we've already gotten done so that we can say, hey, look at that. Look what I've already achieved. Wow. You know, so I still have this left to do. But look what I've already done. I think it's important to keep a check on that because sometimes we think we're not getting anything done. Well, you start to look around and start to write it down. You start to realize, like, wow, I did get a lot done, you know. And it's important to do that because you pat yourself on the back and say, hey, good job. You know, maybe I didn't get it all done, but I certainly did make a good try, and I do the best I can. And um, you can see, you know, the progress being made sort of thing, right? So I do that all the time. Well, we'll take a look at some more of these next week. I'll be on tomorrow night. I think I'll be, it's my birthday. I don't know. I may skip tomorrow night's show, depending on what my sweetheart wants to do. We might have dinner and just watch a movie or whatever. But um, I will be back around on the weekend as well as next week um, with, a, you know, one child to be a survivor to another. Take really good care of yourselves. You know, be good to yourself. If you need, you know, someone to talk to, and a lot of times we don't have anybody around to talk to because, you know, people are busy and they're working, and sometimes they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear from us, you know. You know, you know, you call a crisis line because those people, that's what they're there to do. I want to actually, I want to do that. I want to be one of the crisis line people. Um, I haven't gone through the training, and it's about a two-month training program, but I'm definitely going to look into it. Those people don't get paid. Most of them are volunteers, and even if they are getting paid, it's not much. But, um, you know, most of them are volunteers, and they do it because they care. 
maybe they've lost somebody in their family who died, committed suicide or something. You know, you do the right thing and you make a call. You keep calling until somebody talks to you that, and, and, let, and, and, and you talk to them and it, and it help you to stick around, make the right decision for yourself, to stay here, get some help, whatever it is, whatever kind of help it is. Because a lot of times people in our lives won't do that for us because they got no time. You know, and even if they have time, they don't have time for us. You know, so you need to find people who do have time for us and who can help us because they are out there. But you got to search it out. And if you don't search it out, it's really kind of it's our own fault, right? Because we're just people just aren't going to walk by and say, "Hey, do you need a hand? Do you need help?" Not not likely. We have to be the ones to make the phone call. You do the right thing and you make a call and get yourself some help, right? Uh, whatever kind it is, group support, online group support, anonymous stuff. I really like that. Um, uh, there's safety in numbers to me. And you can even remain anonymous. You don't even have to tell them who your real name is. It's great. Whatever you do, get some help, right? So take good care of yourselves, everybody, and have a great day.